video is practically just an explanation on how to get the most out of the official Epic Games add-on for Blender. There's a lot of workflows on the internet about this subject, but none of them seem to go over the topics that I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm sure that you'll be able to get some value from this video if you use Blender and Unreal Engine. If you don't plan on using Blender and Unreal Engine together in your workflow, well then this video probably isn't going to be for you. If we go to the center Unreal page, first of all, you'll notice that you won't be able to access it by default. We go to releases right here. You're going to get a 404 page like this. So what we need to do is we need to link our Epic Games account and our GitHub account. We're going to come up to our account name up here, come to account. Then we're going to come over here to apps and account. Then we're going to come to GitHub right here and we're going to add our GitHub. Once the GitHub's linked, you'll have access to the Santa Unreal GitHub. Just type in Santa Unreal in Google. Come to the GitHub right here at the top with the GitHub pages. Quick start. Release pages. And now you'll have access to the page. To download the add on, we just go to assets, send to UE zip download once you've saved the file to wherever you want to save it we can go into blender and install the file next so now that we're in blender we can just come up to edit preferences add-ons install locate your sent to unreal zip and then just tick the box but pay attention up here because there'll be a new option called pipeline and this is how we use the center Unreal add-on along with changing all the settings. Over in the outliner, you'll see there's a new export collection. Only the things that are inside this collection will be exported to Unreal. So next we're gonna jump over into Unreal Engine and set up the rest of the prerequisites over there. In Unreal, the only thing we need to do is come up to edit, come to project settings. Then we wanna search for enable remote and you'll see here there's an option called enable remote execution under python we need to make sure that this is checked if you don't see this option you may have to go and enable the python plugin to do that we can just come back to edit come to plugins and then search python and you'll see we just need to make sure that python editor script plugin this one right here is enabled and you'll have to restart the editor. Quick tip here is whenever you open Unreal and Blender together and you want to be able to switch back and forward, we can just win tab and then we can drag the Unreal into a second desktop. Full screen Blender. And then we can use control window right, control window left to switch back and forward between the two programs. Because we have to use up here this export collection to export things, it can be quite cumbersome whenever you have lots of objects in the outliner to put them all into the export so what i recommend is for managing your scene and putting the correct objects into the collection you want to export you can use another add-on called machine tools and this allows us to use this pie menu here where we can create collections and add things to collections as we want so let's grab the light in the camera maybe grab the plane and then we can just press shift c and we click move to export collection and now they're moved into the export. And the same if we want to remove the plane from the export collection, we can just do shift C, move to, back to the scene collection, and it'll be moved outside. Okay, I'm going to talk real quick about moving the object origins here before we get into the settings of Sento Unreal, because this is going to be vital for whatever, what way you want to move the meshes in Unreal. So in Blender, we can press Control plus full stop or Control period to move the origins around. And this will just allow us to move the origin instead of the object. Now, I'm just going to escape out of this for a second because a lot of the time you want to snap the origin to the vertex. So we can just come up to snapping, come to vertex, G, snap it to the corner, and that's that. Now we can press control period or control full stop to get out of that mode again. And now we're back into just moving the object, but it's around this exact origin here. Now instead it rotates. So... Another alternative way of moving this origin is instead, if you don't want to remember the shortcut, is you come up to options up here and then click origins. And you'll see now it's in that mode again, we can move the origin. 
you come back up to options, turn off origins, and we'll see it's back into the other mode. Another reason why I recommend using machine tools is because if we ever want to move, let's say we have all these objects and we press control A to apply all transforms, you'll notice that all the origins go back to the center of the world space. And this can be useful if you don't want to use them all in the one location going into Unreal, but we can actually retain the object origins and still place them in the active level by using a setting in center Unreal. So to do that, we can do shift S with machine tools enabled again. We can set all the origins to their geometry. So they're all in the center of each piece right here, all them. And then when we come up here to pipeline, come to export, settings dialog, import, and then right at the bottom here, place in active level. This is going to place them in the active level. So now you'll see when we push assets and we come over to unreal, they just got pushed in in the exact place and they have their original object origin that we used it, like if you want to use not their the object origin the other origin like the world space origin of blender we can come back over to blender and it's the same place pipeline export settings dialog and instead of import it's under export and it's right at the top here use object origin this needs to be checked so you can select them all and the same if we do any modeling on these this is really efficient because we let's say we want to come in here and we want to do a little inset and we want to just let's say we'll just alt e and we'll punch it through for a minute so we have something like that and then we just do the exact same thing pipeline export push assets and we come back over and there's just a hole straight there done So there's one more setting that you'll want to be made aware of as well. So if you come back over to Blender and if we want these to come in as a nanite mesh to save on resources or you have really high poly models, we just come straight up to the same place, up to pipeline, export, settings dialog, and under import, under FBX, under static mesh, there's an option for build nanite. If we check this, we're going to get nanite meshes when we push. So now we just select all, they're all in the export collection, pipeline, export, push assets. That nanite is being built for all the meshes. So hopefully I've covered most of the important points to do with that on in the workflow in this video. I know there isn't enough time to go into every setting in depth, but if you want to know anything more about that, drop a comment down below and I'll try to respond to you as soon as possible.